Good morning. As we gather today with so many concerns in our hearts and so many ideas in our minds, let me encourage you to take a breath and to be here as we prepare to worship the Lord. Please pray with me. Loving and gracious God, thank you for this day, for this day of celebration, for this day of recognition of who you are, of what you've done, and what that means for us and for the whole world. Praise be to your holy name. Please guide us in this time, we pray. We ask your blessing as we worship together. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Would you please stand for our call to worship? Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen.
looking for a seat, would you turn to someone nearby and say hello? Join me, any kids that would like to join me up here. All right, good morning, good morning. So how are we? To, oh, wait, here come a few more. Okay. Good morning, good morning. I'm us, I'm us. They just keep coming. It's great. It's great. Sure. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. And you. And you. And you. And all y'all. It's great. Well, here we are. And I had a question for you this morning. I wonder if any of you have ever heard your mom or dad say, I love you. You ever heard them say that? Yeah? Do you think they mean it? <laughs> yeah? Okay, why? Why do you think they mean it? Do they ever do anything that shows that they love you? Yeah, anything in particular that you can think of that, sh that your mom or dad shows that they love you? They get you birthday gifts. Good thinking. Okay, what do you think? Any way your mom or dad shows that they love you? Do they ever give you food or? Oh, okay, okay. And when you think of it, you tell me, okay, okay. All right, do they take care of you when you're sick? Do they um, bring friends over to play with you? Do they take you places? They do lots of things, right? And I'm, I wonder if there are other people in your lives who love you and show that in different ways. Maybe grandparents or aunts and uncles or other friends. Maybe teachers at school who take care of you, right? There's all kinds of people around us that take care of us and that show that they like us, that they care about us. Do you know earlier today, Back down the hallway there, we had some pancakes and some sausage and some bacon, and maybe you were there for that, and donuts and cupcakes. It was quite a breakfast, quite a breakfast. And it was put on by a bunch of people who came here last night to get ready and early this morning to make that available to all of us because they, they care about us, and they wanted to show that and do something, do something really kind for us. And it's great to have... People like that in our lives, our parents and other family and friends and teachers, um, people who think about us and care for us and show that in different kinds of ways. They tell us they love us, but they also show it in different kinds of ways. Do you know there's somebody else who, who loves you and who cares about you and who shows that, and that's God. And we talk about God a lot here in this church, and we're so thankful that God loves us and does things to show that God loves us. And um, as you take off from here and go into whatever else is happening today and tomorrow, I hope you will keep in mind that God loves you. You've got people around you who love you, and God loves you too. And so I want you to be thinking about that. I also thought I would give you something because I wanted to show that I care about you too. Uh, sort of, well, We'll see what you think, if this works, but um, tell you what, if I give you one of these for you, could you take a couple to give to somebody that you care about that might even be here today? Okay, so how about, all right. There we go. I hope this color selection is okay.
Sure. Okay. That's the spirit. There we are. All right. Okay. Very good. Well, thanks for coming. You can go back to your seats. Okay. As we prepare our offerings today, we do that recognizing that God cares for us so very well and makes it possible for us to give. When we do this, we also are expressing our faith, believing that God will continue to take care of us, as has been the case for so long. So whether you're giving today here or online or in some other fashion to some other group, May it be with a sense of God's care and grace and with the expectation that what you give will be used in ways that promote good. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, for the way that you pour out your blessings so abundantly, the way that you show us that you love and care for us. And as we bring these offerings now, Lord, we pray that they might be used for your glory and that they would come from hearts that are full of gratitude for all that you have done. Praise be to your holy name. Amen. spend time each week praying with and for one another, and it's a real privilege to pray, to remember people before the Lord, and to track progress as we lift these prayers before God, to see answers that come along, and we've had some answers to 
matters we've been praying about recently. That's always an encouragement, and it uh, stirs us to keep going in our prayers. So I want to invite you now to pray along with me. I'll move us through some different categories, and please add your voice to this as well as we pray, trusting the Lord to hear us and to be at work. Because, God, we know that you're good. We know that you're capable. We know that you have tremendous resources and that you make those available. And so we come before you now with confidence and trust, asking that you would be at work. We pray for government leaders, Lord, these days when there is so much turmoil in so many places, we pray that those tasked with leading governments might look to you, that those who know you in places of responsibility would speak on your behalf. We pray for your church. Lord, we thank you for the many expressions of your church all over this world, some in this area and through our nation and around this globe. But God, we thank you that so many know you and love you and seek to serve you. And we pray that they might continue to do this in ways that are gracious and kind, that bear witness to your goodness. Lord, we pray for this church, for the challenges before us, for the opportunities that lie ahead. Lord, that you would give us the wisdom and the guidance that we need, that you'd help us to keep trusting you. We thank you for the history that we enjoy and pray, God, in your mercy that you'd give us a future that we might serve this community well and bring honor to your name. We thank you, Lord, for the people who are part of our lives. And as we consider the various situations that they're experiencing, Lord, so many have needs. We want to lift those before you now and ask for your good work on their behalf. Lord, we lift before you Nancy and Penny, for Kathy and Daryl. We pray for Joan and for Sharon, for Stephanie. We pray for Debbie and Joanna and Edward, we pray for Julie and Allison, for Sandy, for Roger, for Sherry, for Emma, for Lynn, for Kelly, for John, for Pat, and Lord, these people that we name now. We ask, Lord, for your good work in these lives, for healing, for strength, for patience, for clarity, for strength, for faith. And Lord, we pray for ourselves in the midst of things that we are facing that we're dealing with, that we're anticipating. God, we pray that you'd help us to keep trusting you, to keep looking to you for the wisdom and insight we need. We pray, Lord, that you would be at work on our behalf and that you'd help us to see that, that you'd give us strength in areas where we're in need, that you'd help us to keep relying on you, to live like you matter. We thank you, God, that you hear us. We're so grateful for your steady care. And we bring our praise, our thanks, and our requests now in the name of Jesus, Lord and Savior. Amen.
Well done. Thank you so much. I have a little public service announcement first. After the reading of the scripture, the nursery will be open. I double booked myself this week, but I will be heading down there soon. Your children are always welcome in the congregation, but if you want a break or if they want to have a good time in the nursery, they're more than welcome and we'll be heading there soon. What a week we've had. If you were able to come to services this week, you'll have spent a wonderful Monday Thursday at the Last Supper with testimonies, with heartfelt thoughts of the disciples of Jesus, of a betrayal. On Friday, Good Friday, we lived through Christ's crucifixion, and so did he. And here we are today, and I can't think of a better place to be on Easter Sunday to celebrate the life of Christ than at St. Thomas UCC right now. The scripture readings today are from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and then we'll skip to chapter 10, verses 7 through 11. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word... And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life 
for the sheep. The word of the Lord for our good. And Lord, for this word, we are deeply grateful for its availability and for its message. And we pray now that as we consider these words, that you would speak to our hearts and minds in ways we can understand and keep drawing us closer to yourself, for we pray it through Christ. Amen. On Easter, we celebrate the resurrection, which means that we celebrate life. Prior to Easter, just a couple of days, Jesus was arrested, tried, and convicted. He was crucified, dead, and buried, to use the line from the Apostles' Creed. For Rome, a nuisance had been removed. For the religious leaders, a threat had been neutralized. For God, though, this was part of the plan, because with death, sin was successfully transferred. Jesus carried what held people captive and doomed them to destruction. He solved a problem that no person could hope to fix on their own. And with this death, the love that God has for people was put on display in a dramatic fashion. Now this death, as real as it was, was not the end. Jesus walked out of the tomb, came back from the dead. He is alive. Alive? From a human perspective, a reasonable conclusion to that claim would be skepticism. Back from the dead? Maybe he was resuscitated. People, that happens with people, right? People get resuscitated after a few minutes, possibly an hour or two. There are books about that. There are movies on that. But someone who's been dead for days? Look at this, though, from God's perspective. The God who, in Genesis, breathes life into a form fashioned out of the dirt of the ground. God who, in the words of John, is life. Resurrection then becomes an indication of God's power and also evidence of God's way because because God is for life and life is far stronger than death. Life which describes God's desires and God's commitment. The Bible teaches that God is pro-life in the broadest possible terms. God makes life possible and makes life available for all. That's a point that Jesus is making in John chapter 10 when he compares himself to a gate and says, you come in through me and you're safe. Come in here and experience life, life, he says, to the full. Now, he'll make that similar claim in a different way in another place in chapter 3, where we read that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him might have eternal life. And eternal life is talking about not just what happens when someone dies and goes to heaven. Eternal life starts now. Because Jesus lives, so can we. True, there is a coming day of resurrection for all. When all who 
have fallen asleep in death will be raised. And that will be true for any of us in this room who die before the Lord comes. We will be raised to life if we accept Jesus as Lord, if we trust Jesus as Savior. But before that resurrection, there's an opportunity to enjoy and embrace life now, to embrace the life of God, to embrace life with God, which is actually pretty great because God loves us. A few of our grandkids live fairly close by, which means that every few days they're coming to our place or we're going to theirs. And when they come to our place, they don't come quietly. They burst through the door and there are greetings and demands. <laughs> like, Nano, fix this. It's the stuffed animal this little one has carried for many years, a penguin whose flipper has detached. Nano, fix this. And Nano does. She pulls out needle and thread to do what this kid cannot, to restore this penguin to its former glory. And she is glad to spend the time. She doesn't charge the kid, hasn't done that yet. <laughs> Just does it out of the goodness of her heart because she loves this kid. And this is one of the ways that she shows it. And these kids know it because of what she does. Some years ago, I was between jobs. And I was looking. I was looking all over the place. And I found a promising opportunity on the West Coast. But our situation was such that that was beyond reach for me even to try to go there and talk with people. One of my friends heard about that, and he said, listen, let me take care of that for you. And so whether it's penguin repair or a plane ride, care is given. Love is not simply told, but shown. And maybe you've been on the receiving end of that. Someone who says they love you actually shows it by something they do. You've needed help and you get it. Do you remember what that feels like? Is it a feeling that you're okay with? It actually feels pretty great to be cared for by someone, to have them do something for us that demonstrates their love. When Jesus went to the cross, a threat was neutralized. A nuisance was swept away, or at least so some thought. But his death there, that was a demonstration of love, a way to help people who were in desperate need and unable to solve their own problems. It was care gladly given, and it opened a door into life. Life, let it be said, in an environment saturated by love. You get here because of love. You live here as one who is loved, who is encouraged and empowered to show love who is looking forward to the day when the God who is for you will be with you forever. Which sounds like a pretty good life and is available to all who turn to Jesus, who depend on Jesus for life now and forever. Because the one who died in demonstration of this all-encompassing love did not stay dead. 
Christ is risen. Risen to life. Risen for life. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. As we consider the resurrection, Lord, there is so much. Thank you for this display of power, for this demonstration of your commitment to life. Thank you that you have triumphed over death, that you have taken care of sin, that you have solved the problems that have plagued us that we were unable to address on our own. Thank you that you make life possible. Thank you for a life that is desirable, a life in company with one who loves us, and for the many ways you demonstrate that love. Oh, God, we give our thanks. May we walk in your light. May we embrace the life that you extend. And may we live to your glory. Now, through these days and on. Oh God, open our eyes to see you, our hearts to want you. Draw us close, we pray. Amen. And so we come to the table, the table of our Lord, the table to which Jesus invites all of his friends, all of his followers, a table where we remember, where we see the evidence of love in the broken body and the poured out blood of Jesus. the evidence of God's love, also the anticipation that this meal would foster, that the death it signaled was not the end of things, but rather a beginning. That it's through death life becomes possible through this particular specific death that we remember with the bread and cup. And so as we prepare our hearts for this time, We're going to use the prayer that Jesus taught us as a way to offer our confession for ways that we have slipped away from the Lord. And we're also going to hear in this prayer an opportunity to state again our allegiance to this one who gives himself for us. And so I'll invite you to go with that, go through that prayer with me slowly, meditatively.
And then we'll be passing the bread and cup through the pews and ask that if you're participating, that you take the bread and hold it so that we might all eat together and that you take the cup and also hold that, that we might eat it together as well. And now let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And Lord, as we come to this table, where we see the bread and the cup prepared for us, we go back to that night when Jesus gathered with his friends, broke bread, passed a cup, and spoke of his imminent death. He had told them it was coming. He had told them why it was necessary. And with the benefit of their experience and your spirit, our own understanding of this grows. We thank you for this bread. We thank you for this cup. And as we prepare to eat and drink, O oh Lord, be at work in our hearts and minds, we pray. Through Christ. Amen.
if we move out of that upper room ahead a few years to gatherings of Jesus followers who, when they gathered, would routinely remember the Lord, we can imagine them looking back, remembering how Jesus broke the bread and passed it around to his disciples. And these now who have had a few years to consider and to reflect are realizing, oh, that's what he meant. That he gave himself for us. That he was dying of his own volition. He wasn't forced into it. He was willingly giving himself up for us. And he wants us to remember that. And he wants us to keep coming back to this table, to feed here, to feed on that truth, to remember the Lord, to draw the Lord into ourselves, to make the Lord a part of who we are. And so as we break this bread and hear the Lord passing it to his disciples, asking that as they eat, they would remember him. May that be true for us as well. In the cup, Jesus wants his disciples to see blood 
blood that is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. The language is reminiscent of what is spoken in the Old Testament when blood is poured out from a sacrifice, an animal. And in the pouring out of this blood, the animal's life is forfeit. So in this cup, Jesus says, this is my life given for you. And because of that, life for us is possible. We remember this each time we drink. As we consider the Lord who poured himself out for us. You'll find inside your bulletin a new creed. I'll ask that you take that out and scan it for a moment, because in a moment we're going to say this together. It's always a good thing to know what it is we're saying or singing. Would you please stand? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new the works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be in the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to take a quiet moment. Amen. Let us sing.
The Apostle Paul was a great one for reflecting on the work of Jesus, and he can't hardly talk for more than about a paragraph before Jesus comes into his descriptions as he writes these letters to a bunch of different people scattered around Europe and Asia. On more than one occasion, he reflects on the crucifixion and resurrection. Like this in the letter to the Galatians, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. May you carry this with you as you leave this place today and go wherever it is that's next for you into whatever God has for you. Amen? Thank you. 